I probably say we could probably trust four compounds and probably okay. that's what most people are going to look at, you know, I'm, testosterone, I'm right. yes, nandrolone, uh -huh. and then it's sort of a toss up between primabol and androstanolone. I guess even, you know, from the discussion of even, you know, steroids, mm. we've, we've moved away. Like if you even look, we've developed no new anabolic steroids since the, <laughs> the, since the seventies because yeah. uh -huh. there is no there's no money to be made so no. you know what's been what's been structurally activity relationship derived what the steroids we have now have been developed it's sort of satisfied the need of they have some risks but they have some benefits so mm -hmm. there's no point in investing you know millions into a, a new form of therapy and even then you know that's sort of where SARMs SARMs failed because of we we just can't get to that separation mm -hmm. level of just targeting anabolic tissue. And so, the problem is like SARMs they might have some medical applications, but the selectivity is what it, it it's lost from what seven milligrams per day onwards, or, or yeah. depending on the SARM. Just yeah, like nabivalol, so. for example, that's selective up until ten milligrams, and then it starts to overlap into the beta one receptor, you know, yeah. beta two receptor. So it's and selectivity in, in most cases is dose dependent, but if you want to use SARMs for anabolism, you're far exceeding this selectivity dose. Yeah. And you're okay. Yes, we can't deny, like, because I remember studying these when I was doing my PhD, just as like mm. a side of just, oh, this was like 2008, 2009, and sort of the yeah, first mm. literature review of SARMs that came out, I think, in 2008. And it's going over like where the phase one, two, and three clinical trials were, and put you know S four and Austrian sort of at the lead front, and all you know yeah. other companies were chasing behind with ligandrol and all the other sort of variants okay. of SARMs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it became clear that you know from the data, yes, they they caused anabolic effects, but were clearly causing androgenic side effects when they were titrated to a higher dose. Mm -hmm. And it, it sort of came to you know front of are they as effective as anabolic steroids in terms of genomic effect? And we started to see potentially not. And then you have to sort of medically and ethically weigh up, is it just as better to prescribe, you know, an osteoprotic female, you know, 10 milligrams of anavar than yeah. send her down like a clinical trial of osteoprotic. Exactly. Uh -huh. so, so, you know, pharmaceutical companies have just not like th this is often the question, I guess, why why don't we have new steroids? Why is people why have people moved away from money isn't there? You know, from investing yeah. money into it. And mm -hmm. it's just that there is no return on investment. And and the weird thing is most bodybuilders, they are very into the discontinued compounds. Yeah, yeah. The trimbolone <laughs> and the masterone and the bald well, baldone is still, you know, being used in racehorses and stuff, but Everybody's like really into the gray area and discontinued combo. And now um, Mint right, came and made a little bit of a comeback, which was um, researched to be a, a fertility medication. Yeah. You know, or um, um, what, what is it called? The opposite of that, where you, you know, you basically produce no sterilizing, 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 yeah, yeah, sterilizing. drugs. And, and bodybuilders love that stuff, you know, not realizing that most of these compounds were discontinued for a reason, like Superdraw, yeah. for example. <laughs> Superdraw is great if you want to do a contest or get strong, but, you know, it's so liver toxic and there's no medical application for it that they just took it off the market. Yeah. And it's, it's funny. So knowing everything you know now, which compounds do still get Dr. Dean's seal of approval? It's approval. I think we can, we can look at the, the research and we can sort of probably, I probably say we could probably trust four compounds and probably okay. that's what most people are going to look at, you know, I'm, testosterone, I'm right. yes, nandrolone, uh -huh. and then it's sort of a toss up between primabol and androstanolone because okay. in, in, in uh -huh. my view, Mastron from a chemical perspective is very, very similar to primabolin. Mm -hmm. all, you've, all you've done basically is from a chemistry perspective with prima bowling, you have a very rigid a ring so the a right. ring mm -hmm. that that double bond between c1 and c2 makes that a ring quite rigid right. and we know that the the binding affinity into the androgen receptor the binding domain of the androgen receptor mm -hmm. 
is dependent on the flexibility of that C3 carbonyl, right. of that, that double bond oxygen. So if that double bond between C1 and C2 is making that A ring very rigid, mm -hmm. when you move to masteron, the metal group is moved from here to here, right. but the double bond is gone. So it, although that metal group at C2 has some sort of steric hindrance or there's some bulk coming off the molecule, right. it's, it's slightly more flexible that the A ring can move itself a little more rigidly to mm -hmm. adopt a, a less rigid structure to prima bowlin. So in other words, the, the interaction at the angle receptor mm -hmm. between the two is, is fairly similar from Very a chemistry, similar, huh? from a chemistry you, perspective. Right. But do you feel that the anabolism you would get comparing a similar dose of prima bowlin to masteron, is that also comparable? Because from what I see in practical application, you know, it's... Yeah, well, that this is where the next, this where the next yeah. piece comes is that you then look at three hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase yeah. mm -hmm. and deactivating that that c3 carbonyl making the steroid molecule useless so you know mm -hmm. without that without that carbon without that double bond oxygen it can't mm -hmm. bind into the ligand binding domain right yeah this is why oxandrolone is so more potent milligram for milligram because it's resistant to metabolism exactly yeah and, and basically what you have is a conjugation mechanism. So basically what that means is the double bond that's between C1 and C2 of prima bolin can conjugate and push electrons onto the oxygen in the carbon oil group in prima okay. bolin, uh -huh. making it more readily acceptable for to attach a hydrogen onto it, to hydroxylate it. Mm -hmm. So in other words, you end up with prima bolin being sort of deactivated in skeletal muscle tissue. And that's sort of where we then mm -hmm. see, okay, well, Prima bolin is technically a weaker steroid. Yeah. And that sort of plays into two aspects. It's sort of an increased rate of trihydroxysteroid dehydrogenase activity mm -hmm. because of that potential um, electron resonance and conjugation. And on the other side, then you have, you know, the whole molecule argument that 100 milligrams of prima bolin has you know, mm. so many less molecules than testosterone. Yeah. So that's sort of where you start to see that it's not just, I guess, tissue selectivity or androm binding affinities or receptor I'm affinities. I'm going to add this one to the stream because I calculated all of the molecular weights at one point with the, so you have Mastrone here, for example, you see already a huge discrepancy in the amount of molecules that you get. Yeah. This is just for 100 milligrams. So please, please continue, but I'll just overlay the... Yeah, yeah. Like, this is a clear example, and I've taken, like, Avogadro's constant and then being able exactly. to explain chemically then why some steroids might be weaker than others, and it's not just because of the steroid structure. It's actually because of the dose. Mm. The, the dose yeah. is, has less molecules like, present. So that's why I liked <laughs> when you were posting that on Instagram, because I made that a video, right? I made a video about that a while back, about... You know, even if you take 100 milligrams or 500 milligrams of a compound, it, there's such a discrepancy besides the ester formulation. There's such a discrepancy between the amount of molecules that you get. So I ended up calculating all of that. And you, you can see here that there, there's such a huge difference. So, for example, this is here's the uh, one mole, the avocado is constant. We use that to calculate it. And let's say we take 100 milligrams of um, asterone. I, I, Right, which is 84.4% uh, drostanolone and 15.6% propionate. And then you get 166 um, times, right? A lot of molecules. 166. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, but put, I, I, I think is, that's 10, 10 to the 20, like it's like trillion, quadrillion, big. Pro yeah, probably what, sextillion? <laughs> probably. <laughs> yes. Yeah, probably. Let's let's say sextillion. If, if we're off here, we're sorry, guys. I'm not exactly yeah. sure what the word for this many zeros is. So you have 100 milligrams of test uh, masterone, right? Drosanolone propionate, 166 sextillion molecules. And then prima bolin enanthate is 145 sextillion molecules. So that's, or what is that, 15% difference? Yeah, it's it's big. It's big. Yeah. And that's sort of where, you know, we, we, can, we can all say the genomic effect in terms of mm -hmm 
nitrogen recycling of all steroids is pretty identical because it's not, you know, it's not a fancy mechanism of how these work. You know, no. people think that it's the, the direct turn on of making your muscle tissue anabolic. So it grows indefinitely with steroids. That's not really the case. What, what they're doing on a genomic level is basically when the cell has used protein and it pass, mm. passes it into the bloodstream, it's allowing the, the cell to actually go, hang on, I want those amino acids back again yeah. and pulls it back into the, into the cell. And right. we want that in skeletal tissue so that there's more nitrogen, which means mm -hmm. more amino acids. And the more amino acids, they get more incorporated into peptides and peptides yeah, and more proteins. Pro yeah. Protein and, you know, this, 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 this sort of them where you increase total muscle, uh, I guess, protein synthesis of the body mm -hmm. is by that nitrogen recycling. So we all know that the, the sort of nitrogen retention capabilities of all steroids is, is fairly similar it's sort of what they do outside of that as well that's that's important for their effect and right, some anti-catabolic effects and, and electrolyte retention and then the, the, the effect it has on the pro, proton pump ion exchange yeah and of course and whether, the, the you know, role of sex hormone binding globulin receptor complex and you know it, it gets complicated just, fast that's why yeah. i always laugh that all steroids are equal but <laughs> they potentiate so many different effects that the yeah. results, right, the cumulative results over time are going to be vastly different. That's yes. why it's always so funny, like, you do this cookie cutter contest prep cycle at right? 100 milligrams test probe, <laughs> and 100 <laughs> milligrams masterone probe, <laughs> and 100 milligrams chain acetate. And when you really dissect what is going on, right, it works, obviously, otherwise people wouldn't be doing it. But when you really dissect what all of these different drugs is, are doing, and the overlap, it's um it's quite funny you know but for most guys they don't really care they just want the results yeah i get the results i mean from another sense you've got a cost analysis where you know someone even yeah. asked me before why why wouldn't you use you know it it in the context of things that we start to see even you know recently this sort of popular mass gain and cycle where mastron is included in in quite a large dose so we're talking like yeah. 800 900 milligrams of mastron with yeah, a testosterone right. base and why why would you do that instead of prima bowling? you know why would you do 800 milligrams of mastron mm. and not 800 milligrams of prima bowling or vice it's versa hair, it's hair you know, safe right you know well it comes down to it <laughs> you basically have 800 milligrams of prima bowling or 800 milligrams of mastron if you can get yeah. real prima bowling then in theory it's going to be slightly safer to your body on an aspect of less molecules increased mm -hmm. rate of three hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase right. you know you have all these sort of factors that play in that it's still going to cause protein accretion because of that nitrogen recycling yeah. but there's inflammation because it's pharmaceutical the castor oil gives you more stable yeah. serum concentrations yeah. and you're right. you, you know you're adding all these things up that then you're sort of like okay well you've got mastron which is heavily counterfeited as testosterone that, right. you know you know uh, okay it, mastron if you do use real mastron you'll know all about it because you will see, oh yeah yeah you're flying you you're see, peeing all night and you will also see that um and you see in blood work i don't know where this argument of you know technically they're not aromatase inhibitors but mm. again it comes back to the flexibility yeah in aromatase you have what's called the gatekeeping domain of the enzyme so mm. aromatase has these two peptide structures on the, the outside of the aromatase enzyme that allow molecules to pass in depending right. on their size. Mm -hmm. So if you've got something like prima bowling that is very rigid because of that double mm -hmm. bond that we spoke about, masteron, trastanolone, is more flexible. So it approaches this sort of gate keeping mm -hmm. section of aromatase and it's able to sort of conform itself to fit into the, the binding pocket of right. aromatase. Now, it's not going to do anything, but it's going to occupy that binding pocket right. that, as a competitive inhibitor that if mm. testosterone comes along, it's already occupied and it goes, okay, well, let's occupy yeah, it. Next one. <laughs> Next one, yeah. So, so you, you see even, you know, reductions in estradiol formation with mm. standalone because of that competitive inhibition. Yeah. Not that it's not as lowering your aromatase production. It's just competitive. No, it's competitive, re reversely binding aromatase inhibitor. And it's, it seems to be the case with a lot of DHC derivatives, even with primabolin, albeit not 
to the extent that Mastrone has. I mean, I've seen so much blood work over the years. You do consultations as well. So you just, yeah. you know, you get way more data than is available on PubMed just from anecdotal evidence. Yeah. And then yeah. you realize that, you know, all these drug combinations, they have an effect on, on how your body responds and how your blood work is um, going to change. So that's why I prefer, for example, a dose. I made it a cookie cutter comparison, testosterone to Prima one-to-one ratio. It's a starting point. Yep. Right? Is it the exact same amount of molecules? Do you get the same amount of reversely binding aromatized enzyme inhibiting activity from the Prima bolin as the dose of testosterone requires for nicely balanced estradiol levels? You'll have to see because everybody has different uh, amounts yeah, yeah. of aromatized enzyme expression. And of course, if your body fat levels are higher or your, um, I think there's aromatized expression in the liver, which differs from the yeah, um, peripher peripher yeah, peripheral yeah. tissue. So if you're taking compounds like Dianabol on top of that, which metabolize into methyl estradiol, it complicates it um, a lot further. So to, to come back to the argument of Primabolin versus Masterone, um right you say that they're like kind of tied for the third or fourth place yeah to me to me you know you've got to you've got to sort of view what what you want to take away from it and mm -hmm. you know that that sort of competitive binding of mastron to aromatase can be beneficial for someone who has yeah. a genetic high aromatization rate that we can mm -hmm. selectively control that testosterone to estradiol ratio with the mastron without having to use a, an AI, a strict AI. Mm. 